Welcome to part 1 of the Atomic Audio Visuals in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. You need a few things at the start of this project. First of all, you require the Audio Peer class. If you haven't followed the Audio Visualization tutorial on my channel, you should follow that first to create the class that this tutorial requires. There's a link to the tutorial playlist in the description. And you can also download the entire class on my Patreon if you become a patron. Also, I will be using the new post-processing asset of Unity, of which you can find the download link in the description as well. And that link will bring you to this GitHub page where you can download the post-processing and just import the post-processing folder into your assets and you're good to go. And lastly, I've provided an isosahedron model to download, which basically is a sphere, but with less geometry for performance. You can also choose to use the standard sphere of Unity, of course, or any other model of your choice. If you're using the isosahedron provided by me, then make sure the scale factor is 12.5, uh, because then it's the same scale as the normal sphere of Unity. Now what we want to do is make an atomic attraction, where there's one object, that's the atom, and the other object is the attractor, and the atom will always be pushed towards the attractor. So let's create the attractor, and for that I am going to use the sphere standard of Unity. Let's zoom in onto that, make the screen a little bit bigger. Um, and the only thing we have to do here is just make it invisible. So I'll remove the mesh render, or let's just turn this one off. And I'll call this the attractor. And let's create a new folder called prefabs. We'll drag and drop a tractor into prefabs and that's our first prefab. Now for the second one I am going to take the mesh that we've got here. I'll remove the animator, I'll add a sphere collider and I'll add also a rigid body. I'll turn off gravity and let's rename this to Adam. I'll go to prefabs, drag and drop this into the prefabs folder. And there we've got our two prefabs that we can work with. Now the idea is to instantiate the attractor and the atom prefabs in the scene through one script that will manage them all. But before we start working on that, let's create the behavior of our atom and make it actually attract towards the attractor. So we've got our atom prefab here. And let's create a new script and we'll call this attract2. So this class attract2 is onto the atom object and the atom object has a rigid body. So let's first start with uh, pointing out the rigid body and we'll make it a rigid body. And in the start function we'll say that rigid body is get component rigid body. Now we need to specify three different variables to create the attraction towards another object. One is obviously the transform object that we want to apply our force towards. The second is how much force we want to apply. And the third one is the maximum force that the rigid body can have. So let's create those variables. So I'll start with a public transform. And let's call this the attracted two. Now the second one we need to have a public float and we'll call this the strength of attraction. And also we need to know what the maximum magnitude is going to be. So now that we have these variables we can start creating our scripts to apply the force. So let's first uh, check if the attracted object isn't null. So Let's say that if attracted to is not null. If it's not null, then we want to create a direction of our force that we want to apply. So let's say that we create a vector 3 and we'll call this direction. And it is the position of the um, attracted to object. 
So that's the target position minus the transform dot position. So that's going to be the direction. And then we need to apply the force to the rigid body. So rigid body dot add force. And what we want to apply is the strength of attraction times the direction. Now we also want to say that if the uh, magnitude is higher than a certain point then it should be um, equal to the amount that we'll put inside the max magnitude. So we'll say here an uh, if statement inside of the if brackets. So if the rigid body dot its velocity dot its magnitude is greater than the max magnitude that we can specify. So then we want to say that the rigid body dot its velocity is equal to rigid body dot velocity dot its normalized value times the max magnitude. And now every time that the magnitude is higher than the amount of max magnitude, it will be the amount of max magnitude. And that's all for this script, so let's test it out. So here you can see the variables that we made public. So first of all we've got the attractor2, and let's make that the attractor. And in the next part I will make a script to specify this true script, so we don't have to do it by hand. But for now this is good. And the strength of attraction will be 100 for now, and also the max magnitude I will set it to 100. Um, the attractor itself I'll make it uh, visible for this example. And let's scale it up a little bit. And the atom should now be attracted towards the bigger sphere. So let's play. And it's going towards the big sphere. If we move this around, you can see that the sphere is following. Um, so let's duplicate the atom about 30 times or something. And now if I move this around, you can see all the balls following with their specified uh, force, because we could uh, change the force of the atoms um, to a much lesser force and a much lesser maximum magnitude and if we now move it around you can see that they are following a bit slower. So that's all for this part. In the next part we will start working on a script that instantiates attractors and atoms with custom material colors, make our scene look great and link our script to playing audio. So thanks for watching and if you learned something please give this video a thumbs up or if you like to be updated on more tutorials subscribe to the channel. See you next time.